today we are going to make some grass. No, I'm not in Colorado, so it's not going to be that kind of grass. It's our techniques that are so simple and sensible, <laughs> your models have practically built Stray. themselves. <laughs> Well, ahoy mateys, it's Mad Dog Merv, uh, or as I look here, Cap'n Mad Dog as I, as I go by. Um, I know this is our family history piece, so <laughs> why am I dressed like this? Well, so as you do family history, it, you start asking questions and you will, uh, you know, you'll get to certain points in, in history and you'll start asking, wow, I wonder where, you know, like World War II, I wonder if I had a relative that served in World War II or World War I, uh, you know, big milestones like that. Um, there was a point in time when I, you know, was doing some of this, you know, uh, pirate stuff um, for Halloween and I, you know, wondered during that time period, the golden age as they call it, uh, 1620 to, to 1720 basically uh, geez I wonder if we had any any ancestors that you know what they were doing that during that time and I asked of course because we have so much of our family history done I asked <laughs> I asked somebody in the family and they said well as a matter of fact and they sent me a page and We've talked a little bit about being able to trace where you're from now. Going on family search is a huge thing. Being able to get on family search and, and look at the family group sheets, that's, that's very helpful. Just because you haven't done the work doesn't mean somebody else hasn't done it already. And you might find that your certain ancestral lines go way, way, way back. And that's pretty cool. Uh, so you get, you start combining timelines with like family tree lines, and you look at certain dates like the Revolutionary War and you know your relatives that lived during that time, and you gotta wonder, oh well, I wonder what they did. So then you start researching, and there's a bunch of different ways to, to research that. But today, what we're gonna talk about is one person in particular. And the paper that I got said our pirate ancestor, and I'm like, huh? We got a pirate ancestor? That's interesting. Uh, so, a very common misconception in today's world is there, there is a, a distinction between a buccaneer, a pirate, and a privateer. Okay, big distinctions between the three of them. And we'll talk a little bit about that here in, in a few minutes. And it turns out that one of our ancestors, one of my ancestors, is uh, a very famous privateer. He also did, he also was responsible for uh, bringing the slave trade or one of the people responsible in bring, bringing the slave trade to the United Kingdom. So, you know, by today's standards, you'd go, oh, you know, terrible. It's like, it's like having a, you know, Ted Bundy in your family. Oh my gosh, you know. Um, no. It was a different time. It was a different world. Uh, people thought differently, and people did things differently. And so, you know, you look back through time, and you can't can't condemn the people of the past for what they did, because they lived in a different time. They lived by different standards. And we're going to talk a little bit today about um, John Hawkins. 
turns out that we are related to Mr. Hawkins. He had a very illustrious career, and we will we will uh, touch on that just a little bit. And then we'll touch a little bit on the line, how the line comes down and through, and uh, and where it goes, and how we are actually related. Now, keep in mind that man has hundreds, probably probably hundreds, could be in the thousands, but I think it's probably hundreds of thousands of descendants. Okay, you think about that. You think about uh, you know over a hundred years, a person can easily have over a hundred descendants. Um, 150 years, you know, they're going to have several hundred descendants. So when we're going back 300 years, um, this guy's got a lot of descendants. Uh, don't know how many, but got a lot of descendants. So anyway, we just happen to be part of that group. So today we're going to look at John Hawkins. We're going to look at our pirate ancestry and let's see how it goes going through a bunch of papers in my nightstand and I ran across this piece here that really caught my eye, our pirate ancestor. So this was written by a family member of mine about uh, 10 years ago. I'm going to go ahead and read you what is in here so that the histories we're going to talk about come from in here. So first off, uh, John Hawkins was said to be a pirate and a slaver. Not so nice to have in our family tree. Yet, by doing genealogy, I've learned not to judge my ancestors. They lived in a different time and place with different values. I hope my descendants will also forgive me for my faults. I've learned that some ancestors were very nice people. That's great, yet the not-so-nice people are fun to get to know as well. They keep our family tree interesting. So first off, we probably need to make a distinction. So you think about a pirate and you think about this here. Uh, the golden age of piracy, uh, 1620, 1650 to 1720. Well, John lived 100 years before that, so his look was quite a bit different. And he wasn't a pirate, he was a privateer. So a privateer, they were private individuals commissioned by governments to carry out quasi-military activities. They would sail in privately owned, uh, privately owned and privately armed ships, and they robbed merchant vessels and pillaged settlements belonging to rival countries. And of course, these were always uh, privateers were sanctioned by um, a ruling body like a king or a queen. Now, a pirate is a person who attacks ships at sea. So you can kind of see there's definitely a distinction. A buccaneer is, is something else as well. It's, it's a pirate, but uh, specific to the uh, uh, Caribbean area, and there's some other qualifiers. So anyway, let's talk about John Hawkins. So we usually think about a pirate as wearing an eye patch, but I very much doubt John Hawkins ever wore one. He was born in 1532 in Plymouth, Devonshire, England, to William Hawkins and Joan Trillawany, I don't know how you would say that middle name, Hawkins. His father William was a sea captain and he was a confidant of King Henry VIII. John married Catherine Elizabeth Godson in 1567. Their daughter Elizabeth is our ancestor and we'll get back to this in a minute because there's uh, some question on that. She married John uh, Bouchier Sears. Our line to our line to John Hawkins goes from our Sears line down to our Paddock line, to the Hendricksons, to our Brady line, and Lindsay Anderson Brady, who came to Utah. Brady, uh, Lindsay Anderson Brady is the great-great-grandfather. In 1555, John set sail with three ships for the Caribbean. They hijacked a Portuguese slave ship and traded the 300 slaves in the Caribbean. In 1564, he sailed to the Venezuelan coast and captured 400 Africans. John made a third voyage. About this time, he was treasurer, which was 1577, and controller, uh, 1589, of the Royal Navy. And he made improvements in ships' construction and rigging. His innovations made English ships faster and, and easier to maneuver. In 1588, they were tested against the Spanish Armada. John was Rear Admiral and was one of three commanders against the Armada. 
His second cousin, Sir Francis Drake, was one of the other commanders. John was knighted for his role in this great battle. And here is his coat of arms. Potatoes were first imported to the British Isles in 1563 to 1565, apparently by John Hawkins. Now, I don't have anything substantiating that, but this is what this particular paper says. He is also believed to be in, uh, to have introduced tobacco in 1564. This painting here is very intriguing because it shows uh, Thomas Cavendish on the left, Sir Francis Drake in the center, and Sir John Hawkins on the right-hand side. Sir John Hawkins, Sir Francis Drake, Sir Martin Forbisher, Sir Walter Raleigh were known collectively as the Sea Dogs. According to what I was able to find, some other things about John Hawkins is he was the first Englishman to give a detailed account of Florida. He mentioned the abundance of tobacco, sorrel, maize, and grapes. In 1571-72, John was a member of Parliament for Plymouth. From 1569 to 1580, he was looked upon as Chief Sea Commander of England. In 1595, John accompanied Drake on a treasure hunting expedition to the West Indies. He fell sick and died in his cabin off Puerto Rico in November and was buried at sea. And while I'm here, uh, Francis Drake actually was raised for quite some time in the Hawkins household. You see, it was a common practice back then for relatives who had wealthier relatives to send their kids to be raised within that, that household. So, kind of interesting. This is a typical ship from uh, that time period, the uh, a slave trader or a uh, trader type of ship uh, that was used in that period of time. John Hawkins' spouse of record was Dame Catherine Elizabeth Gonson, who was born about 1540 in Ash Hill, Somerset, England, a daughter of Benjamin Gonson. She and John Hawkins had two children, according to, according to this document that I have our ancestor Elizabeth, and Sir Richard Hawkins. Richard was born in 1561 in Plymouth, Devonshire, England. In 1588, he commanded a queen's ship against the Armada, and in 1590, he served with his father's expedition to the coast of Portugal. In 1603, he was knighted. John Hawkins' father, uh, Father William was born about 1490 in Plymouth, Devonshire, England, to John and Joan Amadeus Hawkins. He married Joan Trelawney, <laughs> that's, that's a tough one for me, of a famous uh, Cornish family. She was born in Lang La Langston, Cornwall. Uh, England to Roger and Isabella Town Trawalini. I boy, I'm going to murder that one all the time. William and Joan had two sons, John and William. The customs ledger of the last years of King Henry VIII showed William exporting cloth and tin to Europe and importing wines, olive oil, sugar, fish, and salt and pepper. He was responsible for establishing trade with the South Seas. His trading activities led him into politics. William became mayor of Plymouth in 1532. In 1544, he was deputy mayor, and England was at war with France. He received a commission from King Henry VIII to annoy the king's enemies in sailing vessels. This began the family business of privateering. William died in about 1553. And that ends the writings of my uh, my family member who put that little little piece together. So I asked that family member, I says, hey, what caused you in the first place to even think to look at this guy? And what she said was, well, she was looking at a family group record from, I can't remember the name of the site, but it was the predecessor to Family Search. So probably about 10, 12 years ago. And was going through this is what family search looks like was going through something like this and was just kind of looking at some of the names and some of the people 
during certain time periods to see what she could find out about them and came across information on that particular site about um, John Hawkins and his ancestry. So that's where that information came from. So I tried to do the same thing and I ran this page which says 10th uh, great-grandmother uh, is the relationship and it goes all the way back to uh, Lady Elizabeth Hawkins and this gentleman I mentioned earlier. However, um, it says that she was born in uh, I think Amsterdam or someplace like that. It just it didn't make sense. So I start doing some searching and I can't find much about her um, anywhere. But I did look at this particular record here of this Sir John um, Sayers, apparently born in 1561. Well, his children started being born a year later. <laughs> Obviously, this isn't right. So somewhere there's some information that hasn't been collected properly. And I was wondering, well, maybe this Elizabeth, I don't know, maybe she's another part of the family. I don't know. So I get to this page here on Wikitree, and it says, Research suggests that this person may have, may not, never have existed. And then it goes on to say, this is a fictional person. Now, this is talking about this particular person uh, being born in um, you know Amsterdam or wherever it was so here's the problem I have run into trying to make this connection right now back to uh, Sir Hawkins I'm having a difficult time because as I bring him up online and start searching for him online there's only one out of about seven sites that I was able to find anything about a daughter named Elizabeth. So, you know, you get back uh, in time here. Some Sometimes records just weren't kept very well. You'll find uh, birth dates, death dates, and marriage dates that are a year or two off sometimes. Um, it's really kind of a difficult thing to, to research. So I went back to my family member and I said, "Now you saw you saw a pedigree chart that went all the way back to um, mm -hmm. Sir Hawkins." And she says, "Yes, on the site that um, that they had 12 years ago, that's where the pedigree chart went was to Elizabeth Hawkins, um, and mentioned her as being the daughter of of Sir Hawkins." So. <sighs> I'm going to have to do some more work on this. It's a good thing I have a cousin who is a, uh, a college professor, a retired college professor, and he just happened to be a medieval history college professor. So uh, I'm going to be calling in um, on him to help me get this mystery completely solved. But as it looks now, it looks like we definitely were related to uh, Sir Hawkins. So Anyway, hope you folks enjoyed this piece and understand that something you may have found years ago, um, you may have trouble finding again. Sometimes information changes, is, is updated, uh, what have you, but we'll get to the bottom of this eventually. But just understand that there's a lot of fun things out there when you, when you do genealogy. And just that, let's see what we can find kind of approach works very well. Thanks for joining us, folks.